Hey, what's up everyone? Henry here and today we have a special guest uh, straight up from Sweden. It's uh, Frederik Hjelm. Uh, he is the CEO of Voy and in this episode he'll tell us about his life story and uh, as well as how he built the company Voy. Voy is a shared e-scooter provider and in the past couple of years it expanded all across Europe. But Frederik, can you tell us a bit more about it? So Voy Technology is um, a company that I founded together with uh, three co-founders um, with the idea of uh, that it's it's completely messed up that we move around in cities in like cars and taxis and so on. And uh, we thought that the future would be more of an electric one where uh, you have uh, light electric vehicles, you share them. Um, and uh, we started with the uh, e-scooters, um, so shared e-scooters. Uh, I mean, in Paris, for example, you, you see Oz, you see Lime, you see Bird, you see Dot. Uh, and um, all over in, in Europe and the world, you, you, yeah, you have seen e-scooters basically exploding the last two years. And I think it's an, it's an excellent alternative to, to other modes of transportation um, when it comes to getting around in cities. Um, and now we are, we started in Stockholm two years ago. Um, Back then, it was only us in Stockholm and Lyme in, in Paris, uh, in Europe. Uh, and since then, uh, um, as most of you probably know, uh, we have seen e-scooters pretty much in all European cities. We have grown from one city to, uh, to more than 40 cities. Uh, and uh, yeah, we continue to, to do so. So it's, clear that it's very clear that there is a demand for uh, new modes of getting around and uh, um, yeah, micro-mobility vehicles such as e-scooters. And what was the starting point of all of it? Yeah, a good question. So I grew up um, um, up in the north in Sweden, so 600 kilometers uh, north of Stockholm. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's a, close to um, the, the most famous ski resort in Sweden. It's called Åre, uh, where they do like this downhill skiing championships and so on. Uh, so I don't know, it was already when I was like 12, 13, I realized, uh, you know, the power of uh, running your own projects uh, instead of being employed. I um, knew since I was very young that I wanted to build things. Um, and my first project, like entrepreneurial project, was actually planting trees. Uh, so me and my cousins, we were planting trees in the forest. Uh, we were uh, driven out to the forest like seven o'clock in the morning and picked up uh, six, seven o'clock in the evening. So we really learned what hard work was. Um, it was not, it was a quite monotonous um, yeah, job, uh, but it was great because we, you know, what we, our input, there was a direct uh, uh, correlation between input and output. You know, the more trees we planted, uh, yeah, the more we made. Uh, and uh, I already, you know, then and through that, I learned two things. One, what hard work is, and uh, second also, you know, the, the um, amazing feeling of uh, yeah when you actually have uh, um, uh, yeah when you have the skin in the game and when input correlates with output. So I went from uh, planting trees to selling newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, started to sell newspapers for, um, yeah, for one of the biggest Swedish um, uh, newspapers, uh, like Swedish Daily News. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think I, I did that for three four years. We we tried to start our own uh, telesales like uh, yeah, telesales agency and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, it was difficult, but we. I, I looked back at that, I think a couple of months ago or a year ago or something like that. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I realized that I, uh, throughout those yeah, three, four years, I got uh, more than 20,000 no's, rejections. Uh, okay. So for me, I think that was, uh, I mean, <laughs> that was the time when I really learned to like detach getting rejections from who I am and from, you know, I, I learned to not take it, uh, yeah, as personal as, uh, as uh, people usually do when getting a reaction. Yeah, I think those two things uh, are potentially the most um, important traits and so on for an entrepreneur. One, you know, grit and just persistence, move on, move on, move on. Um, and secondly, yeah, learn how to sell and learn how to convey ideas and do it in a, uh, do in a, do it in a compelling way. Um, and also I, I had like, uh, personal interest for uh, for technology and computers and so on and that's mm -hmm. of course yeah you, you can get a lot of leverage on code and, and computers uh, which uh, has helped me since since then uh, so uh, after high school i went into 
I studied Stockholm School of Economics, but I also uh, did military service uh, in Sweden. Okay. Uh, so uh, we had we we had some kind of semi mandatory uh, military uh, military service. Uh, I mean, you didn't really have to do it, but some people, like 10,000 people every year, had to do it. And I did it at the language school. Mm -hmm. uh, so I learned, uh, it was like interpreter academy. So I learned uh, Russian and uh, some intelligence, uh, uh, yeah, Russian and intelligence, really, uh, which, uh, was, which was a crazy experience. And after military, you also went to Moscow, if I'm not mistaken, for like three years. Uh, yeah, so... I mean, yeah, I, I was in Moscow, I worked for the government. I realized that, yeah, I don't want to work for the government uh, because when you work for the government, the status quo is encouraged. And yeah, I, since I was young, I wanted to build things and I wanted to, uh, to challenge uh, status quo. Uh, so in the end, I, I quit and uh, um, yeah, eventually started to work for a tech company instead in Russia. It's like the Craigslist uh, of Russia where people mm. buy and sell stuff. Uh, you can buy and sell pretty much anything on that site. Um, and came back to Stockholm, um, yeah, did a stint at Boston Consulting Group. Uh, it's an amazing school. It's, uh, uh, you, you get to work with uh, some of the smartest people out there, uh, at least like the, the, uh, the, the school smart, I mean, the most school smart people out there. And then, of course, there are street smart people. And the street smart people you meet more at places like the family, I would say, <laughs> and out on the streets. Uh, but uh, it's it's a great experience. I love to work with uh, uh, with like ex BCG and ex consultant people. We have a few of them at Boy, uh, and uh, it, you know they, they challenge your thinking like intellectually in such a good way. Uh, so it was a good experience. But the same there, I felt that uh, you know I felt like I was boxed. You mm. know, I was put in a box, and it was a very good box. Uh, it was a very nice box with a lot of other nice people in the box, but uh, it was still a box, mm. and you want to be free. Uh, yeah, me and my me and my cousins, I I had been run, you know, founding and running uh, uh, different entrepreneurial projects. I tried pretty much anything. I knew that I knew that I wanted to build things, and I knew that I wanted to fr uh, to be free. So free in the sense of you know I could wear whatever clothes I wanted to. I could work with uh, the people I I wanted to work with, and I could work uh, the hours I wanted to work, and so on. So I think those two things, the like the desire to build and the desire to be free. Mm. Uh, I've been there all the time, um, and uh, I mean, my yeah, back to your question. So, my my family, my mom is a nurse, and my father is a teacher in entrepreneurship and psychology. Uh, but we have a lot of entrepreneur entrepreneurs in yeah mm -hmm. uh, yeah in the family, or a lot of my relatives are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. so I had seen like the power of um, building things from from early on, and mm -hmm. I guess that's what that's what led me. Uh, yeah, to this. So how did this whole share thing come to your mind? When I came home uh, after BCG, I founded another company called Guestit, uh, which is uh, um, um, also in the sharing economy. So we're like a short term rental uh, platform. So we help people rent out their apartments and homes uh, short term. So if you want to rent out, if, if you can go on vacation this summer, which you probably can't, and want to rent out your apartment for four or six weeks, uh, then guest it come in, comes in and take, uh, takes care of everything. Uh, and that grew my fascination for the sharing economy even bigger uh, and uh, uh, realized that, uh, I mean, this urban transportation question wasn't sold and isn't sold yet. And me and my co-founders, we want to build, we, we, we wanted to build a big company, we wanted to build an impactful company. We saw interesting things happening in Israel. We saw interesting things happening in Santa Monica with uh, electric scooters, electric skateboards, and you know all kinds of electric uh, uh, vehicles. Um, and uh, were inspired by that and uh, decided to uh, get to go for it in Europe. And who were the people that you started it with? Uh, so uh, Douglas uh, is uh, uh, our COO, so he's running operations, and we met in in the army, uh, so military school. Uh, so he has a background in uh, operations, logistics, and startups. And uh, uh, Philip and Adam uh, are uh, my technical co-founders. And uh, uh, Philip is a full-stack developer. He built the back-end, and Adam is a front-end developer and built uh, uh, yeah, the front-end early on. So we had, like, I think I think it's a good mix. I mean, we had a good mix. We had, we had uh, yeah, to some extent, like, builders, Adam and Philip, um, 
like operations and doing Douglas and I uh, did most of the sales and like HR and uh, you know, try to find people and the investors for uh, for this. Uh, so I, th I think that I mean you, you want you probably want those uh, three things like a seller, a builder, and uh, then operations doer or community. Then we started to look into this and we saw like all over the world back then. Um, this was uh, to early 2018. It, it was like, uh, it, it was a bit like this. It was something that was about to happen in micro mobility. In Israel, you saw like all these different scooters, skateboards, uh, whatever, just popping up. In Santa Monica, you saw a bird trying out the scooters on, on UCLA. And we just realized that, I mean, Europe should be an even better place for, for all these solutions because we have better infrastructure with bike lanes and so on. We have uh, politicians and people who are less car centric and more progressive when it comes to uh, transportation. And uh, uh, we have this, um, we had this will, we have this will also to decrease the number of cars and taxis in city centers. Uh, so uh, we decided to, uh, yeah, to kick this off. And uh, we realized also that, uh, I mean, quite a lot of capital uh, will be needed uh, since we need to buy hardware. Uh, it's it's a it, 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 it's a capital uh, capital intensive business, and uh, so I went on yeah, I went out uh, completely uh, immediately, and uh, um, that tried to find capital, um, found capital um, that through some uh, through some old connections, and then yeah, off we went. So, what are the ingredients in building the great company? Um, I would say two things. One. Yeah, two things. One clarity, uh, one culture, and two, like clarity. Um, <laughs> I come from the military, so I would say like clarity, chain of command. But what I mean with that is that I mean, if when you scale from zero to five hundred employees, you need to have structure. Uh, and even though you want, I mean, I'm a strong believer in flat, non-hierarchical um, companies and, and organizations. Uh, but you still need people to understand the role and responsibility into that because otherwise you just add a lot of people and they start get to run in many different directions so i would say if you if you can keep culture and if you can have you know a clear structure at least on roles and responsibilities um, that uh, uh, yeah, those two things are are key and how do you build the culture it comes down to um, i mean it's values in the end, and it, you know, it very much starts from the founders. I mm -hmm. think, uh, uh, you know, the the cultural values that the, that the founders uh, that convey to the organization uh, will be, in the end, those will be. The, I, I, I think that's the, um, yeah, the most important thing, and that will like trickle down uh, into uh, down in the organization. If you have if you have founders who are extremely creative. Then you will get, you know, a very creative organization and so on. If you have extremely structured founders, you will have, you will get a structured organization. So it starts, it starts from that. And what was the rule that you've learned? A learning for me, or it, it has been amplified during this, but I've seen it uh, before in my life as well. Is that, I mean, yeah, you want to keep good vibes and you know you want to build a strong culture and so on. Uh, but you build a strong culture by being transparent and you build a, a, a strong culture and, you know, belief and like purpose, uh, because pe people can take bad news if you're transparent, but what people don't like is when you're not transparent and when you're not sugar, sugar coating things and so on. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, we're trying to, to take very much that approach, be quite open with, uh, with all of our employees that, uh, this is the current situation. This is how much uh, you know. This is how much cash we have in the bank. This is how long it would take us uh, if, uh, um, yeah, confinement lockdown continues throughout the year, to August, to next year. Uh, so this is what you need to, to prepare for. Uh, uh, you want to be in, uh, then this is the situation. Uh, if if you don't want to be in, yeah, then uh, then uh, probably boy uh, boy uh, boy currently is uh, is not the. Uh, uh, the right place to be at. So I think right. I, I, I'm a strong believer in, in transparency. Uh, what keeps you going? What's the purpose, perhaps? No, to me, it's uh, to me, it's about purpose. Purpose for me, and uh, you know, also purpose for 
uh, for our company uh, that yeah what we are focused you know in our little sub vertical uh, micro mobility uh, in cities uh, but we all we're also citizens and we want to be good citizens in the cities we live and I think I mean if you have the opportunity to me being a good citizen also entails you know supporting other people who are in a more difficult uh, environments and, uh, and situations and um, yeah to me it gives purpose and i think for the organization also it, it gives purpose and we would like to involve our employees and the company more in um, in like charity work and so on thank you frederick and thank you the viewer for watching this episode don't forget to check out the other videos on the channel as well as instagram page and the linkedin yeah we'll see you later and stay safe then we out